What is up guys, welcome to another episode of IGCSC Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering section 4 of the syllabus, Biological Molecules. So have a read through that first. Now we're going to begin by uh, explaining the three main types of biological molecules that we can find in our bodies. The first of which is carbohydrates, which is made of the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And um, it's mainly used as a source of energy. Now fats and oils are also made of the uh, three elements, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Um, and as with carbohydrates, they're used as a source of energy. Um, in fact, the energy that you can obtain from um, a unit of fat is twice as much as what you can get from carbohydrates. Uh, but fats and oils, they're also used for insulation and uh, cell membranes. Um, and lastly, proteins. They've also got the three major elements of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but they also contain nitrogen and sometimes sulfur or phosphorus, uh, depending on uh, the type of protein. Now, proteins are extremely important for our bodies uh, because it controls growth, uh, it's used for tissue repair, used to make enzymes, uh, hormones, uh, they're present in cell membranes, and they can also be used for energy if, um, if the situation requires it to do so. Now, the syllabus wants you to understand that large molecules are, are made from smaller units. So, first of all, looking at carbohydrates, the most simplest, smallest form of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. Mono um, meaning one. So glucose is a prime example of that. Now, if two monosaccharides join together by a chemical bond, uh, the resultant molecule is called a disaccharide. Di meaning two. And um, when more and when many monosaccharides join together uh, to form a really, really large um, combined molecule, that molecule is called a polysaccharide. Poly just meaning um, a lot. So uh, an example of a polysaccharide could be starch or glycogen or cellulose. And um, you need to be aware of the fact that these three examples, they're all made from the smaller unit uh, glucose and glucose as I said before is a monosaccharide so here's an example of a uh, polysaccharide here where all uh, all these five uh, monosaccharide units are joined by a chemical bond um, to form a much bigger molecule overall okay uh, next one is uh, next up sorry is the fats and oils which is um, which is a pretty simple example here you just meet you just need to know that um, a unit of fat or oil is represented by um, glycerol being attached to three fatty acid chains. Okay, so um, if a, if a question asks you to uh, describe the structure of uh, of lipids or fats or oils, then you would just, uh, either simply draw out this diagram or explain that it's um, um, a unit of glycerol attached uh, by three fatty acid chains. Okay, and next up is um, proteins, which is the last of them all, and Proteins are just made of long chains of amino acids, and amino acids, um, there are 20 different types of amino acids that exist, and any of them can be used uh, to form a particular chain of protein. Now, if you are doing the extended curriculum, you need to know that different sequences of amino acids uh, result in different types of proteins, which have different 3D shapes. Okay, so uh, the shape of a protein, which is extremely important for their function, is determined by the sequence of amino acids in the chain. Okay, so this is particularly relevant for enzymes and antibodies, which will be covered in, in later topics. Um, now, food testing. Okay, so you need to be able to test for certain types of uh, food. Okay, so... First of all, starch. If you want to test uh, whether or not a certain solution has starch in it, then all you have to do is add in a few drops of iodine to the solution. And if that's if the solution uh, turns blue or black, okay, then that means you have starch. Okay, you've positive, positively um, found that there is starch in the solution. Um, now, reducing sugar is is um is monosaccharides okay so we talked about how starch was an example of a polysaccharide so if you did the reducing sugar test on starch it would not work so reducing sugar essentially you're looking for monosaccharides such as glucose okay and uh glucose isn't the only monosaccharide but it is it is one type of it so i'm just using that as an example here so um this test is called the benedict's test and um 
it's called the Benedict test because if you have a solution of um, the testing solution, so you're checking if this solution has any reducing sugar in it, for example, glucose, then whatever volume of that liquid you have, you're going to add um, Benedict solution to it um, um, in the same or equal volume as the solution. And then what you're going to do is uh, boil the mixture after that. Okay. And uh, if, if there is any reducing sugar present, then uh, there's going to be a ch color change from blue, which is the original um, uh, color of the Benedict solution. Um, and uh, the, the change will be uh, from blue to green or yellow, orange or red. Okay, so you see there's a variety of colors here. The further the color change is along the gradient of colors, the more reducing sugar is present. Okay, so you can actually determine um, not only whether it was present or not, but just how much it was as well. And next up is testing for proteins, and we call this the Biuret test. So once again, you're going to add an equal volume of sodium hydroxide to the solution, um, to the food being tested, um, or the solution, and then you mix. And then you add a couple of uh, drops of 1% copper sulfate, and try not shaking the mixture, and... The color change, if protein is present, will be from blue to purple. Uh, now, if you're testing for fats, this is called the emulsion test, where you dissolve the food um, into uh, ethanol. Okay, so you dissolve the food into ethanol and then pour the solution into a clean uh, test tube of water. Now, if you get any emulsion or anything uh, white uh, going on here, then that means you've got uh, fat present in the food. If not, then, you know, you don't. And lastly is vitamin C, where uh, this test is called the DCPIP test, where you add drops of the testing solution um, into a test tube filled with 1% DCPIP, and you mix it gently after every drop, and if you see a color change from blue to colorless, uh, then you've got vitamin C in your solution. And lastly, um, the structure of a DNA. Uh, you really don't need to know anything too specific here. Uh, it's really just an introductory kind of um, topic to DNA, which will be much more relevant in the next year in uh, A-level biology. But you just need to know that DNA is made of a uh, of two helixes or two strands, which is uh, spiraled into a helix. So we call that a double-stranded helix. And the strands are connected by pairs of bases. Now, there are four types of bases that can be found in DNA. There's adenine, represented by A, guanine, represented by G, thymine, T, and cytosine, uh, C. Now, you don't actually need to know the names, you just need to know the abbreviations. Now, A will always join to T, and C will always join to G, no matter what. Okay, so if we um, got, got this color coded here, A for red, um, orange, T, blue, C, and, you know, uh, pink G. So down here we've got a pink strand uh, or a pink base G. So this must be C. Uh, here, if this was A, then this must be T. And this is once again G. So uh, this must be C. It's it's always paired like that. You don't ever see uh, a thymine uh, combined or joined with a uh, cytosine. It just never happens. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know for DNA. And just a couple of tips. Uh, anything you don't understand, uh, then I'll I'd be gladly. Um, gladly willing to help out so if you've got any questions uh, ask on the comment section below or on my Facebook page IGCSE Biology. Cool? Thank you very much and I'll see you next episode.